Hey everyone, in this video, you'll learn how to set up your characters to play parkour and climbing actions in your scene by using the parkour and climbing system asset in Unity. So here, I have a simple demo scene and I have a character model over here that I downloaded from Mixamo. So I want this character to be able to perform parkour and climbing actions in the scene. And I have already installed the Paco and Climbing System asset. So let's set up this character and the scene using this asset. So first, we have to create a Paco controller by using this character. So for that, we have an editor window. You can go to Tools, Paco and Climbing System, and select Create Character to open it. Okay. Let me just talk this somewhere over here. So I'll create a parkour controller using this editor. So we have to drag and drop our FBX model to the player model field in this editor. And this FBX model of the character must be a humanoid. Okay. So when you rig it, you have to make sure it's humanoid. All right. And now we can go ahead and create the character by clicking on this button. And when I clicked it, it created a game object called Paco controller for us. So right now it's created at 000 position. So I'll have to bring it to the start of the level. Let me do that really quick. All right. So we have created our Paco controller. And now if you run the game, you can see that a player is able to perform parkour actions. All right. The player wasn't able to jump onto that higher ledge. So he's supposed to swing from that ledge. We'll set up swinging soon. Okay. So if in case this didn't work for you, then you have to check the layer of your obstacles. So over here, all the obstacles are in the default layer. Right. So that'll be the layer passed to the parkour controller so if you select the player under the parkour controller here in the environment scanner script you can see that the obstacle layer is set as default right so if you're using a different layer for your obstacles then change the obstacle layer over here to the layer that you're using okay and also we have crown layer in the player controller script you should also change that if you're using a different layer for the obstacle and ground. All right. So we were able to make our player perform the parkour actions, but the player wasn't able to jump and swing from here. We'll be setting that up soon. But first, let's make the player climb on these ledges. So let me bring my player here just to save time. All right. And right now, if you try to climb on these ledges, you can see that it's not working. Right. So that is because for the player to be able to climb, we have to mark these ledges as climbable and create climb points on them. Okay, it's something that you can do in a single click. So let me show you how to do it. So to mark game objects as a climbable ledge, we have to open a climb point editor and here we have an option to bake climb points on it okay so if you select the game object like this and if we click on this bake button this will bake a climb point on that game object so here you can see that we have a green circle right so this thing is the climb point on which our player will hang. All right. So here we have few settings. If we turn on both side and then bake, it will create the climb point on both the sides of the ledge. If it was off, it will really create a climb point on the forward side. Okay, so forward side is the side in which the Z axis is facing. When your setting is 
local. So in this case, we don't need a point behind the sledge because that is inside the wall. But in case you have a ledge in which you can climb from both sides, then we should turn on the setting. Even here, it's okay to have climb points on both sides. It doesn't really matter. The player won't be able to climb to that point because it's behind the wall. Okay. And then we have settings like mount point and distance between points. So to explain distance between points, let me take a longer ledge. So here, if I bake climb points, as you can see that it baked multiple climb points, right? So when we select longer ledges, it'll bake multiple points so that the player can shimmy on it. And you can control the distance between these ledges by changing this value. Okay, so if this was 0.5, then the distance between the climb points would be much shorter. And in this case, you have more climb points, right? But by default, the value will be 0.75. It's a good value to match the animations that we have. Okay, so we have to select all these ledges and create climb points on them. Only then our player will be able to climb on these ledges. Okay, so let me just select all the ledges. You don't have to select the ones in which we already created. But even if you select that's okay. Okay, I've selected everything and I'll turn off both sides because in this case, we really don't need a climb point on the back of the ledge. And I'll click on the bake button to create climb points on all these ledges together. Okay, so it's that easy. So next, we also have a setting here called mount point. So this is used for ledges on which the player can mount up. Right. So for example, on a ledge like this, the player should be able to mount onto it. Right. So we can check mount point for this ledge and click bake again. And this should allow the player to mount. But for smaller ledges, make sure that you don't check this option while baking the points because there's no space for the player to mount. All right. So we have created the climb points. So let's try testing this. All right. So now we can see that the player was able to climb onto the ledge. And we can jump between different ledges. And since this is a mountable ledge, we'll be able to mount on it like this. All right. So it's that easy to set up climbing in your scenes. You just have to select all your ledges and click on a single button. To bake climb points on them. So next, let's try walking through this beam. Okay, so the player is walking normally on this beam, but performing a normal walk on that beam doesn't look really good. It would be better if the player could perform a balanced walk. Okay, so if you have a feature for that in this asset, all you have to do is mark the sledge with a specific tag. So I just have to select the sledge and give the narrow beam tag to it. And now if we go back to the game tab, the player should perform a balanced walk on this beam instead of performing the normal walk animation. Okay. So next Let's make the player swing from bars like this. So to make the player swing on these bars, first we have to create climb points on these bars like to do for the climbing ledges. So let me just select these two bars and I'll pick climb points on them. Okay. So if we create climb points like this, the player will be able to jump and grab that climb point but he won't be able to swing to make it swingable we'll have to do an extra thing so first let me show you how the player can jump and 
hang on these client points. So let me just bring the player back. Okay. And let me try to get to that bar. Okay. So you can see that the player was able to jump and grab the bar, but she didn't swing forward and go to the next bar. Right. So the player was just treating that like another climbing ledge and she also tried to climb on it and fell down. So these bars are not like other climbing ledges. We want the player to swing from this bar and try and jump to the next obstacle. Right. So to make these bars swingable, all you have to do is add a tag to it. So let me select these two bars and I'll change the tag to swingable ledge. Okay. And now the player should be able to swing on it. All right, so now you can see that the player swinged from that bar. So that's how we create swingable bars while using the parkour and climbing system asset. So yeah, try to use all these features and make a complex level. And by the way, when you create your levels, try to create as many prefabs as possible and try to build your level in a modular way. So for example, if you were creating a building, Try to create a modular part like this and then place them together to create the entire building okay so when you create one modular part add the climb points you need on them and then you can reuse that modular part for the whole building and you won't have to go and place climb points on the entire building manually so this is how they create levels in games like assassin's creed this is a good GDC talk on how they built London City in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So just keep that in mind while building levels. So I hope you found this Kickstarter tutorial helpful. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.